From the aromatic odor to the perfect crust, bread needs only a few ingredients, but all the more feeling and time so that it tastes good, lasts long, and is good for our body. For some, it is two o'clock in the morning. For some, it is three o'clock in the morning, but certainly never later than half past three. The baker's working day starts early. There can be no talk of a night's rest in this job. One reason why this industry suffers from a shortage of junior staff. It takes time to process, knead, and form the rolls or loaves by hand, as here at a real baker. Slowly, the best bread and pastries are made. Good bread makes good flavors out of few ingredients. And what's also very important is that the bread is not only good when it comes out of the oven, but that the bread can be eaten for a few days and remains a good product. The bread might change over days, but in a good way. Good bread starts with bread dough, which also has its very personal moods. Depending on the season, weather, and so on, it always behaves a little differently. Until it is baked, it lives, moves, bubbles, it stinks, it does all kinds of things. Of course, it is like a small organism. You can see that when you grow the yeast, how it goes up and down and how it changes and so on, how the odors change. It is living, of course. Jens Jung is one of the owners of the hip John Baker Bakery in Zurich. As a baker, he spends a lot of time with his bread doughs. Even though he's someone who doesn't like to get up early, Jung, son of a Zurich baker dynasty, is therefore usually not in the shop before 5 a.m., unlike his father, who used to start the day at 2 a.m. According to old tradition, Jung gives his dough plenty of time to ferment. This makes the bread more digestible and the flavors can develop. He bakes light and dark bread, organic fruit rolls, organic rye sour or spelt bread, organic olive bread, and many more varieties. Jens Jung sees the fact that the ingredients are organic and regional as a necessity. Flour and cereals are certified with the organic bud, thus guaranteeing a holistic view of food production. Old bread recipes are constantly checked and new recipes invented. What must not be missing here in Switzerland is the Ruchbrot, a dark bread baked out of smelling flour, a Swiss flour specialty. This flour contains a larger proportion of the shell layer of wheat or spelt, and thus also more protein, minerals, and vitamins. Jens Jung scores with quality and now runs two locations in Zurich. One of them is directly opposite the Volkshaus on Helvetia Platz. In the colorful Langenstraßenviertel, which had not seen a bakery for a long time, bread and pastries can now even be delivered by bicycle if desired. Its integrated baking and sales room attracts many people all day long. Jens Jung himself developed the concept of this transparent bakery. Some bread recipes require yeast, fungal crops that are known in Austria as germ. Baker's yeast has been produced in large quantities since the middle of the 19th century as a byproduct of brewer's yeast. It's different in Jens Jung's bakery, of course. The yeast is also homemade here. How exactly this happens is described on the website with a twinkle in the eye. 
the yeast is of course not a speed-bred gene monster as with the others. No, our baker put on Marvin Gaye, lit a scented candle, and then discreetly disappeared so that the fungus could perform sweet propagation in peace. The real John Baker yeast fungus. So, this is here. And uh, four stunden, it's here. Bread is baked and refilled all day long, but in the evening the assortment gets tight. This has a system. In the evening, the shop should be empty so that nothing ends up in the trash. Excess bread goes to social markets. Bicycle couriers ensure that you can enjoy John Baker's bread throughout Zurich. Equipped with a helmet and a large bread container, they meander swiftly through Zurich's traffic so that no one has to wait too long for the bread they want. Probably the most important basic ingredient of bread. Wheat and rye flour are still the most important varieties, but spelt and other cereals are gaining in importance. But all flours need something of which nutritional biologist Michael Zechmann is convinced. You have to look at how flour is produced or how it was produced. Traditionally, when you grind the grain, that is, make the flour, you really let it prove for several weeks. When you press it, you have this beautiful structure that stays together a little. There's always a bit of that, especially the white flowers like that. It always has such a light butter touch. A lot can be discovered between Bornholmer Straße and Schönhauser Allee. Berlin is a city of bakers, for sure. Prenzlauer Berg, where the Berlin of the early 20th century is still visible, the green city, which still really breathes, and the Arnimplatz allow us a glimpse into the Berlin of the 1920s and 1930s. The myth of a bakery that has experienced a lot dates back to this time. The oldest bakery in Berlin, the Bäckerei Lars Siebert, has been working in Schönflissergasse since 1906. Already early in the morning, people wait for the fresh bread, and mostly, it is their Berlin rye bread. Yes, the mixed rye bread is the most popular bread here in Berlin and the surrounding area. Brandenburg, Mecklenburg, one can say in northern Germany, the best-selling bread. About half of the bread we make is just the one variety. Lars Siebert and his bakers have a full program every morning, mixing and weighing. The individual dough pieces are separated from the dough and weighed exactly so that each bread has the same weight. Above all, however, they knead. Kneading is an intensive mixing and processing of all dough ingredients by hand and machine. Usually, the dough is pre-kneaded in the machine and then reworked by hand. Care must be taken that the dough is not over-kneaded, but kneaded and the ingredients perfectly mix. Lars Siebert prepares the bread with sourdough. You always take off a piece of the sourdough that you baked the day before, and that is kept for 14 to 18 hours. It's always a little different, depending on the weather. In winter, it's different than in summer. Also, the multiplication is a little different every day, meaning how much new rye flour is added, how much new water and at what temperature. Those are the secrets of the business or the art of the baker. 
So if you buy a bread now and you think back, you can still find a billionth of what my great-grandfather once put into it, theoretically. In the course of time, the size of the bread has changed with smaller families. The big wheels and rolls have disappeared. Even today, Lars Siebert still uses baker's linen to ripen the bread. Covered by the baker's linen, a fine skin develops on the dough, which later keeps the bread juicy during baking. The rye bread is baked either once for light bread or twice for dark bread. There is an interesting buying behavior. The light bread is bought by women. The dark bread is bought by men. The only difference is the crust, which is either softer or crispier in the dark version. Great-grandfather Gustav Siebert would certainly be pleased that some of his original recipes are still used for baking. Of course, many of the customers' habits have changed, and Lars Siebert has also added some new recipes to its range. However, artificial additives and baking mixtures are not used. In the center is still the rye bread. This cereal has a strong taste, is particularly satiating and rich in vitamin E. Incidentally, Germany produces the largest quantity of rye in the world. So baker Siebert doesn't have to travel far to get his rye flour in close proximity. His rye comes from Brandenburg, the region around Berlin. Shortly before 6.15 a.m., the last shelves are filled. People are already waiting for their bread, as always in a little queue in front of the shop. For most people, every slice of Siebert bread tastes good, even if it is a few days old. Bread must also be allowed to grow old. In industrial bread, for example, sorbitol is added, which is a humectant, so that the bread is still fresh after two or three days, or also substances that inhibit the growth of mold. So if the bread is still not moldy after a week, you should think about why. At 4 a.m., the bread oven is filled with firewood. The master of the bread oven is Kurt Michelmeier. He knows the bread oven very well. Every day, the fire is different, and with it, the baking of the bread. The first monastery bakery in St. Peter in Salzburg dates from 1160 and has been baking in these rooms since then. The wood is lit so that the stove gets the right temperature. What looks simple is a small science that hardly anyone can master anymore. The first origins go back to the 12th century, because originally this water supply, the Alm Canal, was driven through the mountain from 1137 to 1143 by hand. So without machines, because they did not exist at that time yet. And then the mill wheel was certainly erected, because one needed an energy source to be able to grind. And the monasteries were always anxious to supply themselves. And then, of course, they built the bakery. Seeing the smoke that rises and sweeps across the cathedral square tells early Salzburg citizens that they are baking at the Stiftsbäckerei St. Peter. A lot of smoke means a lot of bread this morning. Rye flour, water, salt and sourdough are the secrets of the intensive rye bread, which was baked like this in the Middle Ages. It is a matter of honor that the sourdough is homemade. The sourdough bacteria, which are jointly responsible for the unique taste, can probably be found in all cracks of the baking chamber. The rye flour comes from the Waldviertel, Austria's best rye region, as managing director Franz Grabme believes. The barren soil, the harsh climate, and the altitude of the Waldviertel are ideal for the frugal grain. The fire in the oven must be properly burnt down so that the embers heat the fireplace sufficiently to bake the bread properly. Working and kneading the heavy rye dough really takes strength. Machines help, but in many operations, the power and skills of the people have not yet been replaced. Kurt Michelmeier knows his dough very well. After resting, 
the dough is formed with a machine and then gets a personal touch with the baker's hand. The ready-made breads have time before baking so that the ingredients can mix perfectly. Loaf by loaf in different sizes are waiting for the oven. Every day a piece of old dough is left behind to make a new sourdough. The embers in the oven are carefully redistributed and the ashes are swept out of the oven before the bread is put in. The dough pieces are quickly put into the oven with the bread shooter. It's important that none of the temperature is lost and that the bread is baked under optimal conditions. Water is also applied for a good crust. The rye bread feels every mistake. With wrong treatment, it can become bony. It can jump up. Baking changes that would not make our bakers happy. Thank God everything went well, and the fresh, crispy rye loaves are taken out of the oven. It's a wonderful odor that fills the room and makes the early morning a special experience. The hot loaves are wiped off with water, which refines and seals the crust once again. Piece by piece, the loaves are put into the shelves. Now they can come. The early risers, the bread lovers, the Salzburgers who know what kind of bread treasure they find here. Every day in the evening we stir in the sourdough. This is called the ground sour. It ferments overnight and in the morning flour and water are added again and then as the third step the dough is made. And this aroma is formed during fermentation. You have to keep to certain sourdough levels. The temperature and firmness of the dough have to fit. That's a matter of experience, and our bread is very compact. Not everyone likes that. You have to cut thin slices. You can't cut wedges like with a loose bread. And our bread lasts very long. Some who make a sailing trip take it with them because they can eat it for 14 days. Tradition and craftsmanship are not uncommon in Salzburg. One is proud of the historical heritage of a city which must be preserved in many areas, even when baking bread. The Profitlich Bakery is an institution in Röndorf am Rhein. The almost 300-year-old half-timbered house has been baking since 1892. But not only the bakers of the Profitlich family are an institution in Röndorf. Chancellor Adenauer also lived here in his late years. Today, a foundation and the Adenauer Museum are housed in his house in Röndorf. The Chancellor was Lord Mayor of Cologne in his early years. He had a number of creative ideas to cope with the hunger in Cologne during the First World War. In addition to a recipe for bread, he also developed a recipe for soy sausage, now called vegan. Of course, all recipes have been patented. Adenauer knew that the common cereals were hardly available anymore, but he also knew that you could buy large quantities of corn from Romania and develop a bread from it. So he went to two bakers in Cologne, to Jean and Josef Erbel, and said, here you have the corn, now make some bread out of it. But this was really difficult, because they had no experience with cornmeal. Well, I like to check the crust. The smell is very good. A very fresh bread. The elasticity is very good. Mm. 
Well made. It's still very fresh. It even tastes better after one day. Here in Röndorf, the Cologne cornbread, the Adenauer Brot, is still baked. At the Profitlich Bakery, the corn is processed according to the old Adenauer recipe. They also like to eat the bread themselves. The ingredients are primarily corn flour, wheat flour, some fat is inside, sourdough is important. A very low yeast content and the production method of the corn is important. It has to be dried and then half-baked overnight. A half-baked piece is made so that the maize can absorb as much water as possible. The most important part of Adenauer bread is the drying of the corn. This is the only way to extract the necessary liquid from the corn so that it can be processed in combination with other ingredients. Today, of course, there are higher quality ingredients than during the Great War. What used to be a needy bread is now a finely tuned and tasty bread for the upscale gastronomy and gourmets. Maize is one of the trendy cereals that is often used in alternative bread recipes. Maize flour can only be processed with other flours, as it does not contain any gluten. Maize is gluten-free and is used as an alternative in cases of intolerance. For the processing of the Adenauer bread, it needs some skill. The dough may only be mixed and kneaded briefly. Yeast serves as a propellant. What makes the bread so special is that it saturates for a long time. This was an important characteristic of bread, especially in times of need. Today, a small piece is enough to fill the stomach well with the cornbread. Röndorf lies idyllically on the Rhine. Its history dates back to the early Middle Ages. Wine is cultivated and traditions are cultivated. Good bread prepared in the old way is a matter of course here. Between the old established bakery family Profitlich, specifically Peter's grandfather and Konrad Adenauer, there was not always vain bliss. For example, they had different views on how Röndorf could become an attractive tourist resort. The baker wanted a cable car for the Drachenfels, the Dragon Rock. But Konrad Adenauer did not think much of it, and he prevented the project. Today, it's the Adenauer memorials that lure thousands of visitors to Röndorf. And quite a few of them also take along the good bread the Adenauer bread, which is still produced in the Profitlich bakery, according to the old patent. By the way, the Adenauer bread can only be baked in forms. This is why long loaves of bread are produced, which are cut in the middle so that the resulting steam can escape. Nuremberg is known for its gingerbread for its long and lively history as an innovative industrial city, and of course, also for its bakers, who have always been a driving force behind urban development. One of these bakeries is the organic Imhof Bakery, which has developed an extraordinary product, Emma Brot. Emma, also known as Emma Wheat, is a relative of wheat. It has been cultivated for 5,000 years. Emma contains more proteins than wheat. The zinc and magnesium content is also very high. The flour is ground daily at Imhof. It was not easy to find a good supplier in the region. Today, organic farmer Andreas Waltz delivers his Emma in Amberg. Emma grows up to two meters high on the field and the harvest takes some effort. However, the height of the grain also has many advantages. Other field plants, weeds, never grow to this height and thus cannot harm the ears and the yield. This way, you don't have to work with pesticide. In the past, many cereals were higher. Only in recent years have small wheat and other cereal plants been cultivated. The sourdough is prepared and matures at least 20 hours before further processing. Sourdough is a traditional propellant for bread dough, 
which can arise from the microorganisms naturally present in flour. The so-called spontaneous sourdough, or is produced as pure cultured sourdough using laboratory or industrial processes. Spontaneous sourdough is the natural type of sourdough. In old bakeries, this creates a unique, specific taste that makes the bread from these bakeries so special. Sourdough makes rye and other cereals suitable for baking. Even though the adhesive properties of emmer are limited, at Imhoff, only emmer flour is used for the emmer bread. Customers with mild cereal allergies and sensitivities like to buy the bread or are simply convinced of the emmer taste. It's strong and nutty. It was not always clear that Simona Imhof would join her parents' business and that taking over the business would make her life's dream come true. Of course, the father still helps in the company. He was one of the first organic bakers in Nuremberg to make bakery history. Careful use of resources and ingredients is part of the family history. Being a baker is more than just a job for the Imhof family. It's about a whole philosophy of life. Simona Imhof has no objection to traditional bakery life. My rhythm of life is that I'm in the bakery at two in the morning at the latest, then I go home at noon, when office workers are maybe taking their lunch break, then I take a short baker's nap and pick up my children in the afternoon. At the moment, I still have the big advantage that my father works in the company, that we can split up the jobs in the evening. We always need an hour here in the evening to organize things for the next day. We call it writing bake sheets. We write down which products we need in which quantity for the next day. And I think this rhythm of life fits wonderfully to my two children, because I have the afternoons off and have time to spend with them. I also like the night. I like it when I get on my bike and ride here. It takes me five minutes to get to work, and I enjoy this silence before it really starts here. Because then there's no more break for a while. We have to produce a lot here until the breakfast break. People still work together, forming the breads together. Emma bread needs a little more time to ripen and must be handled and baked carefully so that it does not break. Then, the dough pieces mature in fermentation baskets before baking to keep the shape. They're formed from wicker or ground wood. The fermentation basket supports the dough, protects it from drying out, and keeps the dough temperature stable. In the end, you get a nutty, delicious bread that you just can't get enough of. One can say that, unlike the super-fine flour, the white flour, it's harder. You can also feel the shells when you reach into the flour. You can feel that more of the grain has been preserved than in the super-fine flour. And you taste it in the end. It has a very nutty taste when you bite into it. So it's a bread that you can eat without butter and without cold meat and cheese, because it has a very special taste. Old cereals combined with new recipes are good measures to preserve a piece of bread enjoyment, even if you suffer from food allergies. Especially the slow processing, long rest periods for the dough, the so-called dough guidance. You basically have to differentiate what possibilities there are. One is celiac disease, which affects very few people. It is a real autoimmune disease against gluten. Then there is the wheat allergy, which affects relatively few people. The immune system is involved. And then there are those with bulky names, non-celiac disease, non-wheat allergy, wheat sensitivity for short. Davos in the Swiss canton of Grisson is a winter sports paradise, a climatic health resort and the home of an innovative baker, Rolf Weber, who also invents new types of bread, such as his chia bread. 
Chia bread has many positive characteristics. It is gluten-free, for example. There are very few breads that are without E numbers and that you can enjoy. Then it has the chia seeds inside, which are very rich in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. We also find very high protein sources, very healthy protein sources, and this bread has hardly any carbohydrates and is very fiber rich. It is therefore the ideal snack for all those sitting somewhere in the office, for a strength or an endurance athlete. So it is the perfect and healthiest bread for everyone. It is a different bread, as you can see from the ingredients. Almonds, coconut fat, salt, molasses, linseed, sunflower seeds, oat flakes and chia seeds. For many people, these are regarded as the new power seeds, real miracle cures from nature, so-called superfood, an ointment plant with roots in Mexico. The small grains have been approved as foodstuffs in Europe since 2009 and are critically examined. Studies on the effect are still lacking. Nevertheless, in advertising, the health-promoting aspects are claimed without limits. Chia seeds are rich in proteins, antioxidants, fiber, vitamins and minerals, and omega-3 fatty acids. However, these ingredients can be eaten in other foods, such as cheese, apples, or linseed in the same or easier way. Because one would have to eat one kilogram of the actual tasteless chia seed to get the vitamin C content of a small apple. Baker Rolf Weber is keen to experiment and has developed his chia bread. Weber sees the hype about chia seeds soberly, wants to give them a chance without hoping for miracles. The processing of chia is not easy and the exact recipe is also not revealed. Coconut oil has lost its previously bad reputation and is now considered a very healthy, high quality vegetable oil. To process it well, it must be melted slowly. The viscous molasses is also first mixed into the slightly warmed coconut fat so that it is better distributed in the bread dough. Warm water and the molasses fat mixture ensure that the dry ingredients bind well. There are no animal fats or eggs in the recipe. Chia bread is therefore also a good alternative for vegans and is gluten-free. Another reason that fueled the hype surrounding the healthy effect of these swollen black grains. The grain has long since conquered not only bakeries, but also juice bars, organic shops, and health magazines. Long-term studies do not exist yet, neither on the positive effects propagated nor on the possible negative ones. After swelling the dough mixture, the chia dough is filled into molds. The dough must be pressed well into the mold so that the mixture holds well together after baking. It took a lot of innovation and development time to bake a new bread from high quality and unusual ingredients. It has succeeded. The chia bread is popular. It's a tasty alternative with new taste experiences and shows what bread can be today. At the Weber Bakery, it is now good manners to take a piece of chia bread with you. Wild grasses were already being collected and ground 30,000 years ago. For 11,000 years, there's been agriculture and cereals bred with it. Wheat and rye are the most important varieties today. 
In the last hundred years, the appearance of wheat and rye has also changed with new varieties. The stems have become shorter, the yield higher, the seed capacity reduced. Many a baker goes in search of his rye or spelt again. With Erik Kasses, it was the rye that made him look for his variety, and he found it. His champagne rye grows up to 2.2 meters high. And it not only promises a lot, but it also makes Eric Kass's rye bread the ultimate taste experience. More and more old cereals are being rediscovered. Emma, spelt, oats, and barley are finding their way into the bakeries. In addition, there are various pseudo cereals, seeds or knotweed plants, such as buckwheat. Buckwheat is also increasingly grown for bread production. These are colorful fields that shine between the cereal fields in early summer. Often the grain of the region is processed, as with Katarina and Christina Walter. I've been here for 25 years because of love. I came to the farm 25 years ago and started baking bread immediately because I learned this from my grandmother as a child on the Alp. We baked in an old stone oven with fire. We used to bake our own bread there. And 25 years later, I met a handsome farmer, and the first thing I saw here was the old bread bakery, and I thought to myself, this is where I am at home. In the Rauchkuchel, the oldest part of the house, which is estimated to be 300 years old, new life has arrived. The old walls were freed from the soot of decades, and now you can simply follow the fresh bread smell as you enter the farmhouse. The homemade buckwheat bread already smells aromatic during production. The buckwheat flour comes from their own fields and the region. Few people know that buckwheat is a so-called pseudo-cereal and belongs to the knotweed plant family. Depending on the region, it's also called heath, heather grain, heather barley, blende, brine, black maize grain, or Turkish wheat. It's considered a frugal grain and had its first peak in Europe in the 16th century, but was pushed back by the equally easy-to-cultivate potato in the 18th century. With artificial fertilizers, more productive varieties became more interesting for cultivation, and buckwheat almost completely disappeared from the scene in the 20th century, at least in Germany. Buckwheat was only cultivated in remote valleys and for traditional dishes, as in Carinthia. In recent decades, however, buckwheat has been replanted due to changes in food habits. It's one of the crops used in modern recipes, It takes some skill to process the buckwheat. The recipe for the buckwheat bread was improved and refined by Katharina Walter and her daughter on the basis of a traditional pattern. It's important that the ingredients are precisely mixed and that they stand for a long time so that the ingredients can combine well and the bread gets a nice crumb, but also remains juicy and tasty. Because buckwheat is gluten-free, it can be used as a dietary supplement for celiac disease. People with celiac disease have gluten intolerance. Gluten is a gluing protein, which is present in many cereals, and thus makes the consumption of bread impossible for those affected. Buckwheat is generally considered a valuable food with a lot of protein and starch. It is said to lower blood sugar and also has other health-promoting properties. Johanna Sommeregger started growing these alternative cereals in the valley, and I was interested because the customers kept asking if we could do something like this, precisely because of these intolerance matters. And then I got the first buckwheat, and I have to tell you quite honestly that it was a bit of a dilemma in the beginning, because it's very difficult to bake. It has no baking characteristics, 
and the mixing ratio with spelt flour is difficult. Of course, I dug out old recipes and tried. But meanwhile, this has become one of our most popular breads. Every bread dough needs love and time, which you can find here in Obervelach in Mölltal. Everything is homemade, and there is more than one life in bread. There is so much life in there, even in sourdough. If I take a closer look at which bacteria cultures live in there, then I can decide how much lactic acid bacteria I use so that the bread tastes like this or that. Those who want to taste the rye bread with the intense taste of natural soil and unspoilt plants are in good hands with the flour of John's rye also known as a grain of forest shrub. St. John's rye is the bread grain for the Valta ladies. St. John's rye is an archetype of rye. It takes two years from sowing to harvest, and the grains are smaller than rye. Supposedly, no great incentive to cultivate the grain on a large scale. Only lovers and bread specialists decide to use the grain. But it also has decisive advantages. The grain tastes much more intense than rye, and the bread baked from it is the perfect pleasure. St. John's rye is called the cereal because of its relatively early sowing date in the year, around the 24th of June. It's called Urrogen, or Urkorn, original rye, because, like Emma, it is one of the very old cultivated cereal varieties. The original rye is easy to grind and mix with spelt, emma, and other wheat flours. It's a good bread grain, which can be easily processed with traditional natural sourdough. It's particularly wholesome and healthy bread. In the cut dark and strong in the aroma, completely without coloring with malt sugar or other additions, as is unfortunately usual with industrial brown bread recipes today. St. John's rye contains numerous vitamins and minerals. The gluten protein is also present to a large extent, so that the St. John's rye bread has a good consistency after baking. But the most important ingredients are time, love, and the attention devoted to bread. Every loaf is handmade. Baking bread is also a rural art, an old craft of women who have always provided the daily bread on the remote farms. Bread was often only baked once a month, stored and enjoyed to the last piece, even if sometimes it was a bit hard on the crust. To have enough bread was an essential part of daily life. What sounds romantic today was and is hard work, real handwork. Kneading and forming loaves requires strength and endurance. People who are looking for real bread often end up in Obervelach. Here, you'll find what you're looking for. Bread enjoyment in pure culture, unadulterated, and with incomparable taste. Ja. 
Super. Reinkisch. Das ist sehr lobenswert. Ein frisches Wunder. Mhm. Gut. Bitte sehr. Die große ja. Nummer ist sehr ja. herrlich. Einmal. Das ist aber ja. Also, ja. Das ja. Ja. Mhm. Wir sehen das Ja, eben. Ja. There are several ways to color bread, from black tea extract to brown sugar or sugar beet syrup. Many breads that are sold as wholemeal breads have a wholemeal content, of course, they have to by law. But this brown color usually comes from sugar beet syrup or some other kind of sugar that you add. But the future also influences innovative bakeries like Casas. Anyone who loves bread not only makes it from good ingredients, but also supplies it with other ingredients for success. If one considers bread as a perfect living being, then it's almost self-evident that one also relies on music when making the dough pieces. Eric Cassis has built a bread roll chamber with music. Here, he lets his dough pieces rest and is convinced that part of the musical energy is also transferred to his bread and ultimately makes it the best product. It goes without saying that it can only be classical energy like Mozart or Bach. Most handicraft businesses that really still regard bread as a living creature, that is, they regard dough as a living creature, give bread time. This is a very important factor, that the dough has a certain time to prove, which can take hours to days. The industrially produced bread no longer has this time. In this respect, this artisan bread is certainly better, as there are still various mechanisms that transform the grain in such a way that it is better tolerated. And here we are back at grandfathers. They basically did everything right. They have the time factor, which we no longer have today. The Waldviertel is classic forest rye country. Everywhere, says Erich Kasses, he saw the plant as a child, but nobody used it anymore. The Waldviertel soon regarded itself as part of the new organic culture. One reason for this, the agriculture has changed very slowly here because the industrial use of the soils in the Waldviertel is difficult and with perseverance, tradition, consciousness, people here have preserved old cultural techniques as well as baking. One of them is Erik Kasses. In Taya, he took over his father's family business and together with his wife did what he always wanted to do, make good bread. A seemingly simple matter, but an antithesis to the speed and demands of industrial bread production. It was too little to produce only for Taya. His idea of bread was connected over the years with the new enjoyment and nutritional movements like slow food. The bread of the Casas company became a brand that also conquered Vienna in tenacious detailed work. His bakery also offers jobs to many people. Here, real bakers are trained who know why they want to learn this profession, and many stay in the company for a lifetime. To be an entrepreneur, bread entrepreneur, also means to take responsibility for yourself, your family, your employees, and the product bread in the most diverse variations. Such an operation can't be switched off because the doughs, the pre-doughs, and the preparation doughs need attention 24-7. They have to be stirred and fed. They are his pets, as Eric Kasse sees it. His bakery is full of life, both large and small. The working day isn't over yet, but when the first breeze of bread and pastries leave the bakery, it's time to breathe deeply and sit down for a bakery snack. 
It's a cycle that makes bread what it should be, a food that has accompanied us for more than 30,000 years. Bread is part of our daily life. It's about the real thing, dealing with one of the foundations of our culture and civilization. The grain for the new harvest is just ripening, so Taya is a good place to celebrate. A large bread table is set up in front of the bakery with all the bread specialties that can be found in the Waldviertel and at Kasses. The bread from the Waldviertel also comes to Vienna every week. Many of the delicatessen shops and restaurants swear by the fine breads. Erik Kasses especially likes to deliver his bread to the Kutschkermarkt, a piece of preserved market culture in Vienna. His daughters, who've been working in the bakery since their earliest childhood, also like to come along. For them, there is no question that their bread has a future, because bread will continue to be an essential food and a stimulant of daily nutrition. <laughs>